Welcome back to KC Talks EV and yes we are finally here at the London to Brighton EV Rally 2025. The car park over here, so this is Westminster City School, is getting packed right now so let's go check out some of the cars that are going to be completing the rally. So on this side over here we've got all of the BYD Dolphin Surfs. So um, last year I had a BYD Atto 3 and they've actually got absolutely loads of Dolphin Surfs here. They've got this absolutely in my opinion beautiful lime green color over here and they've also got loads of lime green vehicles over here and then obviously yeah we've got all the cars here it is starting to uh, fill up the car park last year i do remember it being absolutely massive um you know loads and loads of different cars here which is great we've got rob from rs Sphinx over there setting up his car ready to go my car is now in the middle of that uh pile of other cars over there we've got a puma gen e which is really really nice i've been meaning actually to go have a look and um, test drive one of those, so make sure they are subscribed to see that. Yeah, We've got Paul Eden over there. <laughs> so I've actually um, interviewed him at Everything Electric London, which you can have a look at, and it all, is all getting a little bit busy at the moment, so let's wait and see. They've also got over here, they've also got two BYD C-Line 7s as well, um, taking part in the rally, and there is a uh, pace car, which is a BYD Seal. That video is coming out probably um, before, probably after this one so um, I have had a uh, BYD seal for a week that I've had on test and yes I've already got my sticker on my QR code is definitely a bit wonky so I'll probably fix that in a moment but here's the Ionic competing in the challenge which reminds me I need to go register the car for the efficiency challenge I completely forgot to do that when uh, I had the Atto 3 last year where I got five miles per kilowatt hour not a bad result in my honest opinion from a Atto 3, but I'm hoping that this one, I think I'm targeting, I think, 7 miles per kilowatt hour on this rally, so let's see if I can actually get that. Okay, so for some reason it switched to my uh, Bluetooth microphone in the car, so just to be aware, we're on 55,679 miles. Um, over here we're starting 95% state of charge, so you know that I'm not cheating. And if I just go to the accumulated info, I did reset it. Uh, it was at six miles per kilowatt hour, but I will be resetting it again uh, just before we start. Reset the consumption. I can't reset the drive info, uh, but it's currently indicating 201 miles. Um, with the aircon on, it does go down ever so slightly, but cars have also um, popped up as well. And again, as I said, my target will be seven miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, which would be absolutely amazing in fact um, when this car was new um, what we're looking at 38 kilowatt hour battery pack that would be 268 miles from a 38 kilowatt hour battery pack so let's see if we can do that i need to set the route get ourselves ready to go and we'll be on our way okay now we're off i do need to set the sat nav but i can hear tim island's uh custom exhaust in the background Right, okay, Brighton, yep. I'm now gonna reset the trip computer again because to give me a more accurate time. Okay, reset trip. I need to go right, is what they said. It's fine. Recommended 52.5 miles. The route guidance will start now. Now turn left and then immediately right. Okay, so I've got to go right, but it's now going to reroute. So that's fine. Okay, right. In 320 yards, turn left at the end of the road. I've got to turn left. I must admit that this sat nav is definitely better than some of the other ones that I've used previously. Uh, the previous ones that I've used, like um, from like my MG, for example, were just now completely right. useless, I'll be honest. Whereas this one actually isn't too bad at all. As I mentioned, I can't reset the uh, drive info because I think that's like, it's not even a whole day. I think you have to like stop for a few hours before it will reset that part. Because I don't even think, yeah, as I said, I don't think it's a daily thing. It does come up on my meter, um, on my app as a daily thing. But this one, on the other hand, doesn't. Um, I probably should have plugged in my microphone, uh, but it should be all right. 
last year I actually had a reasonable amount of sleep this time around. Um, last year I was running on, I'm pretty sure, about two hours of sleep and I also had to drive back home, which was a okay, wonderful fine. experience. Um, in terms of temperature today, it's actually really, really nice. It's, what, 22 degrees right now. It is going to get up to, I believe, 30 degrees throughout the day, which means I have actually packed some sun cream. I have packed um, lots of water. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not too bad. OK, so we're going to go past Westminster Bridge. Uh, I believe that they've got some uh, photographers miles, on... Turn left onto Westminster Bridge Road on um, Westminster Bridge itself, which is absolutely lovely. They got an absolutely beautiful shot last year of the Atto Free the golfing and the surf going over Westminster Bridge with Big Ben. Or I keep forgetting what the tower is called, um, because obviously Big Ben's the um, the the bell. But uh, yeah, the tower in the background. So in the one and a half miles that I have traveled, it's been 5.6 miles per kilowatt at the moment. So we really need to pick up the pace. Let's not get sidespied by a bus. Right. Now keep right. Okay. So we're now on the south side of London now. Across the Thames. So not get into a bus lane. Living in Hull for 10 years has uh, completely stopped me from driving in any bus lane. Let's not kill a pigeon more at it. That would probably be quite bad for sustainability. Which is one of the... Is that the Tavscan? Um, the Cupra? I always forget what it's called. Is it Tavscan or... Anyway, it's the ID4 um, equivalent for Cupra. And as I said, in front of us right now is an absolutely beautiful... I have a feeling, I want to say it's an Austin. I might be very, very wrong. I'm really not good with my um, really old classic cars. But it is a electric vehicle conversion. Um, as I said, really, really beautiful. In fact, I believe it participated in the um, London's Brighton EV rally in 2023. We're now going back down the hill again. Uh, my efficiency's gone awfully. Uh, 5.9 miles per kilometer at the moment. Uh, but we're now going back down the hill again. So hopefully we can get a bit of efficiency. So we have just completed the London to Brighton leg and well, I didn't quite reach seven, uh, but I think 6.9 miles per kilowatt hour isn't bad at all. Um, I actually arrived here with a little bit better state of charge compared to what I expected. So I expected around 75% state of charge, meaning that I would have used 20% to do the 54.7 miles that I've covered. But I actually arrived here with 76% state of charge. And I think 6.9 miles per kilowatt hour is still pretty good. I'm definitely really, really happy with that. The In terms of total time, I mean, London traffic was an absolute nightmare, as you saw. Uh, but outside of London, it wasn't too bad. I would say, however, I probably should have avoided the M23. I probably should have gone down where the um, classic Austin went down, which um, was the A23 all of the way. I did end up uh, coming off the motorway and then um, going back on it. Anyway, so let's go check out some of the festivities on Madeira Drive and let's go check out the rest of the London to Brighton EV rally. All right then, so since we're here now and since it's definitely a lot more packed than it was about an hour ago, let's go check out some of the stuff that's been showcased here on Madeira Drive. So we've got Hancock here, which is one of the principal sponsors of the rally, showcasing their new Hancock um, Evo tire. We've got Tate's also showcasing an EV3. Now this is something that I've been really, really excited to have a look at on today's um, show. We've got the BYD Dolphin Surf. 
So this vehicle starts from 18495 so one of the, definitely one of the more affordable electric vehicles on the market. Definitely a bit more upmarket compared to things like the Leap Motor T03. Um, absolutely still, really, really lovely vehicle. So take two on this. Um, this is the BYD Dolphin Surf. So this is definitely one of the most anticipated vehicles from the BYD range. So let's go have a quick look. Sorry about the the music there. Right, let's have this. So inside the car, at least, it's really, really lovely in here. I mean, it really is um, very similar to the Dolphin, the Atto Free, and the Seal. So we've got here. It's definitely a smaller display. So I believe it's eight inch um, on the display, and then a smaller um, inbuilt display as well. Uh, but it's definitely really, really BYD like, as you can see. And actually, interior quality in here is pretty good. Um, in the next few weeks, I believe I am going to be having a look at the Leap Motor T03. It might already be there. I'll link it as a related video. But the Leap Motor T03 is £16,000 or 15995 whereas this um, Dolphin Surf is 18495 So a little bit more expensive, but definitely very, very premium in here, if you have a look. Oh, right, let's have a look. So I think this has been put into um, definitely the furthest it can go back. And I've still got a tiny, tiny bit of knee room as well. On top of that, you can slide your feet underneath, so it's absolutely fine. This is, however, a strict four-seater vehicle. So um, you've got one, two in front, and then two in the back only. But it's actually very, very spacious. If you actually go into a reasonable driving position, like this one, absolutely, yeah, we've definitely got still very nice knee room and you can slide your feet under and actually headroom wise is also pretty good as well. Boot space. Boot space is pretty reasonable, very, very square opening. Obviously you do have quite a big lip down here, but that's really to maximize the space. And that is a very, very quick look at the Dolphin Surf. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be on the channel fairly soon. So make sure that you are subscribed and um, you are informed. So we've also got Ford. They're actually doing test drives of the Capri as well as the Ford Explorer. So I might actually have a look at those in a moment before getting a free massage, which is uh, lovely to have after a really, really long day. We've got Warren here from EVA England. Now, this is something I've been really, really interested to see. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I can do a test ride with this because I don't have a CBT or a license. But the Maving bikes I've been really, really interested to see Keep coming up on my keep coming up on my Facebook adverts. Um, 80 mile range. We're getting ready to welcome our final few finishers here at the 2025. London We've got Run. the RAC, okay, which also have um, two uh, key transit custom uh, mobile mechanics, which is really really good to see. Actually, even out bags and bits and pieces as well. There's a few more electric commercials, which again on this channel we've done quite a few from the Maxis range. So we've got the Titan Electric over here. I always forget which one this is. This is a uh, this is an EV Tora. I always get confused because there's that and the EQV. If you look at the Porsche stand here, they've got actually a new Macan Electric, which is lovely. Obviously, if it's a Porsche stand, you're going to have to Porsche 911, even if it isn't fully electric. And they've got a Facebook iPad as well. So this is, yeah, this is an e-veto again. You know, electric commercial vehicles need to, there needs to be a lot more of them on the market. And well, there are definitely are them on the market. Obviously we've got this Porsche Taycan as well. Really, really lovely vehicle. And then we've got even more solar. This is obviously designed for, for I believe a ground mount installation. And you've got ones down here for a flat roof installation as well. We've also got here some retro classic cars. In fact, actually, um, behind us a minute ago, there was loads of electric camper van conversions. It was really, really good to see. So this is a classic Porsche 911 Turbo that has been converted to be full electric. Um, Retro Electric seem to have done that, which is really, really good. The speakers, they were mentioning that the most converted as well as classic electric vehicles has been entered for the 2025 rally, which is really, really good to see. So I'm here with Callum at Retro Electric, and he's got some absolutely amazing Porsche 911 yes, Turbo. Yes. So could you talk me through the um, conversion process and also what it's got? So it's it's obviously a Porsche 911, mm -hmm. uh, motor in the back, still a direct drive motor, straight onto the drive shaft, so it's not going through the gearbox. 
gets about 200 miles of range, split battery pack between the front and the rear, keeps the weight distribution the same, so it's still 60-40, drives as a Porsche as always has. Yeah, the motor's about 220 horsepower. It's actually 50 grams lighter now than it was when it was internal combustion. So you regain a bit more performance from, from that. It's still a Porsche from the outside, but you, you open the bonnet, open the, the deck lid, and, and you find something completely different. Basically, I walked past this and I thought this was absolutely amazing because, yeah, it looks pretty much completely stock. You've yeah. even kept where the fuel filler yeah. is. And yeah. the only difference is, obviously, it's got a Type 2 connector. But the other thing as well is just, yeah, as I say, it's completely stock, but it's still got that Porsche magic. Yes, yes. It's still got that weight distribution yeah. and it's 50 kilograms lighter, yes. which is excellent. No, we wanted to keep it, keep the, the styling as classic as possible. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to, to shout about the fact that it's an EV from the outside, even down to the, the gear shifter. It's, that's now your um, direction. Oh, so excellent. you push it forward to go forward, pull it back to go backwards. So yeah, it keep, keeps all the, all the original styling. I guess in a way, the first thing I want to ask is, I mean, I'm not exactly, I don't have a Porsche 911 to, um, <laughs> to convert, unfortunately, but let's say that someone did have it, yes. where could they find you? And also, what kind of relative pricing are we kind of looking okay. at for maybe the uh, version? So we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on TikTok, we're on all the social media platforms, retroelectrics.co.uk. Conversion like this, if you brought us the car, start from about 70k, that gets you, yeah, 200 miles of range, 220 horsepower motor, CCS fast charging, heater, and then anything else that you, you want to add to it. Excellent. And I, I think we had a bit of discussion beforehand as well. You have also converted other vehicles well, yes. apart from this yeah. 11. Yeah. So, um, well, from three wheelers like BMW Isetta, we've done a Tuk Tuk, um, up to Toyota FJ40, Land Cruisers, Defenders, anything. We've done over 30 Beetles now. Yeah, we, we, we pride ourselves on the fact that we can convert anything without ruining the car so nothing's cut nothing's drilled everything bolts into the original mounting points and if it ever wants to be it can be taken out turn a combustion and it can, can be put back in so we're not ruining the car it's it's still very much the classic porsche we've just modified a bit excellent yeah. so as you mentioned you've got instagram as well you've got a website yes, as well yes. if for example any of my viewers would like to for example convert their classic electric yes. vehicle yeah absolutely they can come find yes, you. Yes, please get in touch. Please do. Absolutely. So, thank you very much, Callum, for thank you. Retro Electric. So, I think that is pretty much it from the London to Brighton EV Rally 2025. By the way, you can check out 2024, which I've left in the uh, related video section at the top. And hopefully, you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Leave a comment below to let me know what your favourite part of it was. And I think that is pretty much it. So, thank you for watching and talk to you later.